Hello dear viewers, welcome to this time analysis of CAT 2023, the slot 2, the afternoon slot of the examination. My name is uh, Shwetank Malik, I am an IIM Indore graduate, I am a faculty member at Time Bhopal and Indore centers and I will take you through the analysis of the paper as it happened today. We will go through a brief overview of the overall uh, paper distribution, then we will delve deep into BRC. English section, DILR and quant section. Compare an overall estimate of good attempts, accuracy rates, cutoffs for different expected percentiles. And then also try and give a concluding note on the comparison of slot 2 with respect to slot 1 in our uh, preliminary opinion. So overall the paper was on expected lines in terms of the number of questions. Uh, in the VRC section you had uh, RC and verbal as usual. Uh, similar to the last year's paper four passages four questions making 16 in rc and about eight questions in verbal ability spread evenly across uh, theme summary uh, para formation odd one out and missing sentence in the paragraph uh, as a fill in the blank uh, dilr had uh, four caselets with five questions each and uh, quant had 22 questions the number of uh, non mcq questions where you had to mark your answer in a box uh, were also uh, noted down separately and you would be able to recollect if you attempted that slot too these are the numbers on the slide that you can see so you had uh, no non mcq questions in rc which is expected like many earlier years four questions uh, with uh, marking the odd one out and uh, marking the parajumble sequence as uh, the non mcq box type questions theta type questions dilr and quant had eight questions each it decidedly decidedly an improvement in this particular count over the earlier years now uh, having said this now in terms of the overall experience across many centers where students uh, from across the country at, from time had attempted uh, smooth overall experiences uh, very few reports of some difficulty experienced especially because in some of the computer labs, uh, there were pen marks on the screen and things of that particular nature. Though it was not a botheration because once the test started, everything was very clearly legible. No surprises in the exam pattern, at least in terms of the pattern, how the verbal RC split was there, how many caselets were expected in DILR, how many questions per caselet, things of that nature. So to that extent, at least pattern wise, the paper remained similar to last couple of years. In this particular slot, there was one particular question in the VARC section, uh, specifically verbal ability, which was asterisk marked and it was called a mandatory question. Um, such a question was not visible in the other slot. So in slot two, why was one question and that two only in the English section was marked as mandatory, even though there was nothing very uniquely different about that verbal question in terms of difficulty levels. So we still do not know how that will be used as a statistical basis for any kind of comparison or scaling of the scores we have no idea so we will not comment directly on that but there was one question this was one surprise thing to note even though it was not a new type of question and that was not something which was otherwise uh, that you could have called an astounding level of difficulty Now we'll go to the detailed analysis, which is what is the theme of our today's uh, video analysis, reading comprehension and verbal ability. This is the broad uh, distribution, nothing much to read out here. Most of you who attempted this slot would recollect this para formation, odd one out, para summary, sentence placement in missing fill in the blank in the paragraph, all were evenly divided and four RC passages with four questions each. Uh, this also was clear. I will go to the detailed discussion. We will do the reading comprehension part of our talk right now. There was one passage on fast fashion and how things that are uh, quick to catch up in the name of ecology and uh, saving the planet and these kind of things uh, also would have a counter argument to be given. Uh, this particular passage was moderate to read because the subject matter is contemporary. It is something that uh, comes regularly in different blocks. Uh, sometimes it is uh, the political talk of the town. It's part of editorials. So this from a subject matter and language point of view was not a difficult passage. 
but uh, the questions were moderate they were not easy and straightforward uh, questions involved a fair amount of understanding of the argument presentation and uh, only about two questions were of the kind which could be located back by referring to a particular part of the passage or a paragraph otherwise uh, the the questions were tricky uh, closely worded options were there and uh, if you do not read the passage in a hurried kind of a manner then i am sure this passage must have been attempted by many many candidates decidedly a passage of choice there was a passage on the history and interpretation of facts and uh, this was a step up in the quality of language and the comprehension needed and how you interpret a particular fact and uh, to what extent a fact is a fact and to what extent is the opinion around the fact more important or less important why do we need historians at all if the facts are uh, absolutely unquestioned and everybody can easily understand when did a war happen or not happen things of that nature and shouldn't a historian really be needed to understand the gray area surrounding the war what happened after or the circumstances leading to the war and things of that nature so very good argument presentation the passage changed a little bit of tone in the middle of the body where uh, after describing the role of historians and raising questions on their roles the author's own arguments came into the fore in the second half of the passage uh, the passage reading i would say would be moderate to difficult uh, there were decently moderately difficult uh, vocabulary words but not very very high in terms of idioms or uh, strength of arguments but the questions were difficult the questions involved a fair amount of interpretation so even if you were very very sure in terms of and calm in terms of reading this particular passage this passage would have consumed time so this brings back to this particular idea at time where we say that don't go in with an assumption of equal amount of time to every rc passage or every dilr case let because the level of difficulties can vary and in rc especially you realize the level of difficulty and time consumption not always during reading the passage alone but also sometimes when you are spending extra time in argument clarity in the questions that you do later on then one decidedly easy passage to read was about netflix and european culture what kind of television and online viewing programs have emigrated from the us and are being accepted across europe and europe is made up of many countries many different languages how despite the growth of american uh, tv and web series culture via netflix uh, in the in the european uh, continent still the local broadcasters somewhere in france somewhere in germany are still the larger uh, viewership holders what is it that netflix and these american series are trying to create original content which will appeal more to the european community and uh, there were uh, different shades of arguments given overall the passage was not argumentative at all different shades of arguments were given in terms of what should netflix do more should netflix be seen as a challenge by the local people who want to protect their culture they want only the german language or the french language and things like these so uh, the passage reading was also moderate i would not say it was a fairly easy entertainment bollywood or hollywood article reading passage it, it it's a cat paper after all and the questions that were given also were moderate uh, passage was easily understandable it did not have flashy vocabulary this is a passage which i am sure most candidates must have definitely come across during their navigation would have and those of you who would have scanned and selected and prioritized your rc passages attempt would have definitely chosen this passage then there is the uh, most difficult of all the four rc passages that came in slot 2 was on liberalism and this made for a difficult read the language was abstract uh, lengthy arguments were given and how liberalism as a philosophy initially in the passage was criticized in the words of a third person narrated by the author and later on in the second half of the passage how liberalism dying off very soon in many countries and many parts of the world uh, would not be the right thing right way to look at it and how liberalism can be defended how it can rise up like a phoenix from its ashes uh, this was supported by the author in the second half so it had many different hues of arguments on criticisms made by the third person about liberalism and questioning the predictions about the death of liberalism and how liberalism can still survive 
and um, the questions also out here were very nicely made in fact across this particular rc section uh, the questions that you had in rc had fair bit of uh, uh, understanding of the entire passage involved and fair number of questions not just one or two but at least about five or six questions which had uh, many different ways of reading how many of the following are true except which of the following can further be deduced except which of the following additionally if true would undermine the author's point of view or the central idea of the passage so very very nicely worded questions focusing on very good levels of comprehension um, for candidates very very good with english during their cat preparation they tend to deliberately look at three to four passages to be done uh, which I would say, in my opinion, uh, in this analysis, compared to the previous uh, so many cats also, uh, would not really be true. This is a slightly more difficult RC section compared to the earlier cats. Earlier cats were no easy. They also had debatable options and uh, closely worded questions. But this is a, a bit shade more tricky. Very shortly, I'll tell you about the cutoffs and good attempts and you'll understand this compared to uh, what was generally predicted with last year's CAT and what actually happened in the CAT scorecards last year. This is something that uh, I would say about the RC part of it. Now the verbal part of it, which is about para formation questions and uh, para jumbles, theme summary, so on and so forth. The para formation questions were moderate. One question was moderate, uh, straightforward, uh, not, not, not many permutations to be done in your mind while you read the four sentences. And one question was bordering on moderate to difficult. So, uh, because these are box type questions and if you had time after doing three RCs at least, if not all the four RCs, we definitely have gone for these questions because anyways they don't have negative marking. But before them you could have done something like uh, a para summary or a sentence placement question because out there clearly you had demarcated choices where you could have repeatedly put those uh, blank sentences and then chosen them. Other three were moderate. Odd one outs, I would say, were not difficult at all. It was uh, within one or two rounds of reading the group of five statements, it was very easy to decipher which are the other four which can not just stay very close to each other in the context, but also can make a parajumble. You didn't have to rack your brains as heavily as a parajumble question. So, and the last statement left behind is the odd one out. So, the odd one out is definitely doable. In fact, uh, for a change compared to earlier CATs, uh, overall difficulty of the 16 questions of RC, I would say is a bit more difficult than the doability factor of the verbal questions in this particular slot. Now, uh, verbal questions typically appeared on the screen towards the end of the English section. So, if you were not habitual with scanning and having a look before you allocate your entire 40 minutes, then maybe some of you would have found out later on, maybe through this analysis and later on when the CAT paper gets released by the authorities, uh, that these are some of them are more doable than one of the RC passages. Overall difficulty of the section would be moderate to difficult, uh, given that it's a CAT paper. Uh, decent attempts would be somewhere in this particular range on the screen. I will not just repeat, read this, not waste your time. And... Uh, if there were very close options and it involved further two minutes investment into a verbal question or further three minutes investment into repeat reading three paragraphs of an RC, then it, it, it was best advisable that you would have rather done uh, another question later on or went on to the next question. And it is close to last year's VRC, but I would say it's a shade more difficult. I would say about 10 to 15 percent trickier than last year's VRC going by the attempts and time consumption in the passages to make good comprehension. Now, as an elementary analysis, given our experience with uh, tracking so many CAT papers and from the students feedback that we have got, especially uh, the students who get very good percentiles and uh, perform very well in the preparation throughout the year, uh, we would say that about 85 percentile would mean about eight, eight odd questions with good accuracy. 11 odd would get you to 95 and about uh, 15 odd questions would get you 99. Not all of them being correct because English is debatable. There will be differences of opinion. We'll have to wait and see uh, when the paper gets released on a student login, what the answer key used by the IMS is. But this is decidedly uh, 
a slight shade lower than uh, what it was last year. Going to the DILR part, uh, this was a welcome change for uh, a lot of people who write the CAT and track the CAT examination and students who were expecting a very difficult DILR because last year it was uh, very, very high level of difficulty. Uh, doing two caselets was a nightmare even for some of the good students. One caselet itself got you a very high percentile, cleared the cutoff. This year, the level of difficulty went slightly down. Uh, there, there is greater degree of doability in the nature of the logic and the newness of the caselets. So, there was one table formation on people drawing numbers during different days of the week from uh, 1 to 9 or some such digit. And uh, the number that they draw is ranked 1, 2, 3, depending on higher value, lower value, lowest value. And their ranks were given in the table, but the numbers that they draw were not given in the table. But they had given four clues, which allowed for very easy uh, distribution of the likely numbers. Uh, there was only one person B in the list whose exact data could not eventually be found out. And there were questions regarding maxima minima about that. This was definitely a doable case study, logically not very challenging. It did not involve heavy degree table formation of multiple scenarios. So this would be a moderate caselet which came in the slot too. Then there were five firms who were raising money, one crore or two crore in different years, different amount of money raised from their inception date. The money raised keeps on increasing till the date the company closes down. The money raised also starts going down every year. They are raising money, but the amount of money they raise is more than the previous year and the jump between two consecutive years uh, is either one crore or two crore things like that they had very clear instructions given uh, total amount of money raised by the corporates in their entire timeline was given some of the companies closing years were mentioned some of the companies the liquidation date of the company the closing date of the company was not mentioned but the starting date of every company was available so based on this student feedback i would say uh, you had to only look at the total amount of money raised by the company and plot the increase decrease possibilities and there were many scenarios you could have gone to numbers like it could have raised two crores or three crores three crores or four crores things of that nature till what year in between is the capital raised increasing after that particular year somewhere in between is the capital raise starting to decrease and eventually you need to reach one when the company gets liquidated and there were multiple scenarios so, uh, and the questions were about least possible, maximum possible, which of the statement is definitely true. Out of the five questions in this case, that only two questions were on exact values. So this would have required a fair amount of uh, scenario building, but logically this is not very challenging. You are playing with single digit numbers and looking at arithmetic addition of numbers to achieve a particular total. So this would be a case that would, would have tempted many candidates and definitely could have been done. Then uh, there was a caselet on theme parks. Three three girls are visiting four rides in a particular theme park as per uh, reported uh, uh, experiences by the students. And there were a variety of clues given in terms of how long does a ride take? What is the cost of the ride? Rides are available from morning which time till evening which time? One of the rides was available only till late afternoon. Then given those clues, you had to find out which girl went on how many rides, what is the amount spent and so on and so forth which are the rights commonly taken by uh, all of them and things of that nature. Uh, it required some degree of scenario building towards the end where uh, you were, you got clear very quickly about one of the girl candidates who went to those rights. But for the other two, you had to really rack your brains, uh, but uh, logically not very, very challenging. So I would say this is difficult because of the nature of scenario building towards the second half of the caselet. And there were five questions given out here. Uh, even if somebody attempted this particular caselet partially would have got at least two questions correct, which were about the first girl who had uh, gone on those rides. Then the most difficult caselet in DILR in slot two was about nine boxes in a grid of three cross three with different number of balls. And it had a fair amount of quant based reasoning. They had averages also. They had medians also. Not only did you have to look at what values of numbers to be put in those bags, uh, in those table formations so that the average is achieved like this and there were decimals involved and uh, amongst those multiple numbers you have to then arrange them in a higher to lower or lower to higher order and look at the median value. Uh, 
uh, this would look attractive to many candidates who are in general good with sudoku oriented number formation managing same total horizontally vertically diagonally in these kind of caselets but this was far 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 trickier than that uh, this was genuinely a difficult caselet in this particular year's dilr uh, depending on overall scanning that you would have spent in 40 minutes to evaluate which caselet to really pick up and commit to um, you would have then decidedly left the, this particular caselet on the boxes uh, and the trays of medians and means so the theme parks caselet and the five firms raising money or the three persons drawing numbers three caselets are moderate moderate to difficult uh, if you do even two of them it would be a fantastic score if you do only one caselet it would not be a fantastic score so overall this is not very difficult category dilr like last year this is difficult to very difficult one caselet decidedly i am sure a lot of candidates will be able to do and uh, this is uh, one notch uh, easier than last year's dilr then in terms of percentiles uh, there's a decided jump in the score required compared to last year's experience um, 85 percentile would be around uh, 11 to 13 marks now marks would mean if you would have done just one caselet five questions five questions correctly would have then given you five into three fifteen marks so even if you get like four right one wrong kind of a thing you are still very nicely placed but this does not make you reach 93 94 percentile like it happened last year for one caselet for for about two caselets uh, you are likely to go to 99 odd percentile which would mean 5 plus 5, 2 caselets, 10 questions done, 10 into 3, 30. So even if you get in the range of 25, 27, you're likely to start touching 99 percentile as per our analysis right now. This is about the DILR part. We'll now go to quant part, which was a surprise given the level of difficulty and trends that we have seen in the quant section over the past 6, 7 years in the CAT. Uh, this is decidedly... Uh, the most difficult section amongst the three in terms of number of questions attentable and what score needed to be able to get a very high percentile so this is a broad distribution of the questions across the topics so you had ratio proportions you had profit and loss you had one question on compounding where uh, every six months the rate of interest is charged and the amount of interest paid at the end of one year is so much calculate the total interest paid when three years horizon uh, loan is recovered time and distance a tricky difficult question two people going in same direction one person coming from the opposite direction different gaps between them how do they cross each other simultaneously things of that nature numbers there were tricky questions there were three questions involving numbers none of them very very straightforward one question was slightly manual it was not uh, directly formula based which was about uh, two factors apart from the number in itself less than 50 as per reports from the students Geometry, uh, one question moderate, one question very easy, triangle drawn in a circle where the hypotenuse, uh, where one side of the triangle is a diameter, so it's a right angle triangle. And then there was a question on choosing which of the options shows the area of the triangle. So it's using the variables given for the triangle, you do half base into height. Progressions had difficult questions and quadratic equations had difficult questions uh, involving maximum possible range, minimum possible range between expressions like alpha cube and beta cube and so on and so forth. Uh, even the questions which were doable were either slightly manual none of the questions was very straightforward apart from maybe uh, one question on uh, geometry uh, one question on profit and loss uh, out of the two questions one question was one friend selling to other friend other friend selling back at a different price and a discount to the original friend then the original friend selling it to a third friend so it was very easy to navigate the transaction and find the total profit loss or the cost price selling price comparison so uh, only recollect broadly about three or four questions that could be kind of marked as uh, manual but easy but most questions were lengthy even if they were doable and some of them were uh, reasonably difficult concepts averages mixtures and allegations uh, uh, there were two questions one question on averages uh, about people working you know a proportion of the factory is in manufacturing other people are non-manufacturing and the average salary of the whole group versus the average salary of the manufacturing group so this was a decidedly doable question another question in averages was mixtures allegations was about milk uh, being replaced to add water 
and eventually you want to achieve a concentration of less than 50 percent things like these so that was also very doable coordinate geometry was a difficult question uh, as per the students reports it was about uh, uh, area between the curves where one of the curves was a modulus function and not just a modulus function in one variable like x or y where it's very easy to draw the different quadrants for the modulus but it involved x y and another modulus of x minus 3 or x minus 5 uh, special equations maximum minimum possible values on integers logarithm simplification question was there inequalities was there least possible value maximum possible value time and work what difficult question was there with positive pipes and negative pipes drain pipes and filling pipes different combination times were given and you have to calculate one of the pipes uh, time taken for completely filling the tank um, overall lengthy paper uh, even for very good candidates uh, who otherwise would target 99.5, 99.8 kind of maths being the biggest contributor, you would not be in a position to reach something like uh, uh, 18, 19 attempts and that too maybe 16 or 17 going accurately. So that way it's going to be a, a tricky call. Uh, given that this was the third section, then this particular difficulty level as a surprise that would have come to the CAT aspirants. Uh, would have at least not led to a psychological uh, effect. Sometimes when the beginning sections become very difficult, the rest of the paper also uh, goes down in terms of your accuracy, enthusiasm, your focus. You start dreading. But uh, thankfully, the DILR was slightly more doable. English has been tricky always. Uh, but maths decidedly was more tricky. And therefore, your ability to look at a question and immediately analyze. How quickly do you recollect? A method or a concept behind it and how you can visualize how manual will the calculation go how lengthy the question is that would have enabled you to skip questions quickly and in this process across the 22 odd questions you would have discovered that uh, depending on preparation obviously anywhere between 5 7 questions to 11 12 questions uh, depending on you know good candidate and so on and so forth uh, are all that you can do because of the time consumption it takes uh, so higher degree of algebra content and variability in the answers maxima minima ranges and some topics were just not there in this particular slot that is there on the slide as an analysis and significantly higher level of difficulty compared to previous years so this would be a section which would be a low scoring section for a given level of percentile as you can see from our analysis on the screen now for 85 percentile, 95 percentile, 99 percentile, this kind of a net score is what we are looking at. So how many attempts with what kind of accuracy would get you that kind of score because the paper was so difficult. Uh, look at 85 percentile which is generally good enough to clear cutoffs of most of the colleges. If you do four questions correctly and four into three you get 12 marks and you get in the range of 10 plus minus one at least not 12 maybe 11 maybe 10 uh, you are getting 85 percentile that is how difficult this particular uh, quant section uh, is now and for 99 percentile uh, plus kind of a score we are looking at something like 10 attempts so a score in the range of 25 to 30 should definitely cross 99 percentile now difficulty level of section seems to be broadly uniform across the slots now what do i mean by this i mean morning slot and evening slot so english of morning slot english of afternoon slot dr reasoning of morning slot dr reasoning of afternoon similarly maths and paper compared to last year's cat is slightly tougher overall dr reasoning has become moderate and slightly more doable but quant has really jumped in difficulty and english has become marginally more difficult so overall i would say in terms of total cat percentage total number of attempts this is a slightly tougher paper than last year and therefore to be able to achieve an 80 percentile 85 95 99 99.5 whatever be your target or expectation uh, you would need a slightly lower score in this year's paper to be able to achieve the same high target uh, as a first cut analysis for this paper in total score what range you should get now this is the total score this is the addition of all the three sections put together this is on your screen you can easily read this I will not repeat the translation and if you see 99 percentile marks that we are estimating as of now uh, this can go through a little bit of correction as you know more details and more accurate questions about the paper can be seen when the paper gets released on CAT student logins um, this is decidedly lower than uh, what was a 99 percentile prediction for uh, last year. 
Now, uh, this slot compared to the morning slot and deviation in the difficulty level of sections. So, this is what we can broadly compare. If you look at uh, what we are understanding by looking at analysis of the first slot and the afternoon slot that I am speaking about. Uh, 16 to 18, 10 to 12 and 9 to 9. So, it clearly shows that the morning slot was one shade even more difficult than this particular afternoon slot. So, that's all we have for you at this point in time as a first cut analysis and uh, stay in touch with the channel for further more detailed updates as we get you closer to the cat analysis. Thank you.